Today is December 18th, 2025. We are no longer approaching the event. We are inside it. Less than 24 hours remain before the interstellar object known as 3I Atlas reaches its closest point to Earth. This is the final compression of the timeline, the moment when months of observation narrow into hours, and hours narrow into minutes, and something about the last day feels different, not louder, not dramatic, quieter, more deliberate. For most of this year, the working assumption surrounding 3i Atlas was stability. It was framed as a rare but ultimately familiar phenomenon, an interstellar comet, a fragment from another star system, passing through on a hyperbolic trajectory, briefly illuminated by our sun before disappearing back into the dark. That framing allowed everyone to stay calm, a fit inside existing categories. It required no revision of fundamentals. But as the object moved deeper into the inner solar system, the data began to accumulate in a way that resisted simplification. Not one anomaly, not two. A series of behaviors that, when isolated, could be dismissed, but when viewed together, formed something harder to explain away. This is not about one strange graph or one unusual image. It's about convergence. Before we go any further, I want to be clear about something. Nothing you're about to hear depends on belief, speculation, or sensationalism. What has changed over the last 24 hours is not the imagination of observers, but the density of correlations. Independent measurements are beginning to echo one another. And tomorrow, December 19th, is when those echoes either collapse into noise or sharpen into signal. If you're following this closely, you already know that one of the central points of confusion around 3i Atlas has been its tail geometry. More specifically, the appearance of a so-called anti-tail. In classical cometary physics, an anti-tail is usually not a physical structure at all. It's a projection effect, a line of sight illusion created when Earth passes through the orbital plane of the dust sheet. The particles themselves are still behaving normally. It just looks strange from our vantage point. That explanation has worked for decades. What changed is that in the case of 3i Atlas, the anti-tail did not remain static. It did not simply appear and fade as geometry shifted. According to new analyses circulating through preprint channels, it exhibited lateral motion prior to perihelion, not smearing, not dispersing, oscillating. The estimated scale of the structure is difficult to overstate. Measurements suggest a length exceeding 400,000 kilometers. That places it beyond the Earth-Moon distance, a coherent feature of that size attached to an object that is, by most estimates, no more than a few hundred meters across. At that ratio, intuition starts to break down. But scale alone is not the problem. Astrophysics routinely deals with extreme ratios. The issue is behavior. Loose particulate matter does not oscillate coherently at that scale. Dust clouds respond sluggishly. Plasma disperses. Solar radiation pressure smooths out sharp features. Yet the reported motion was neither chaotic nor delayed. It followed a pattern, a repeatable deviation, detected just before the object reached its closest point to the sun. That timing is not incidental. Perihelion represents the most hostile environment an object like this encounters. Thermal stress peaks, outgassing increases, radiation pressure intensifies. If a structure persists, or worse, becomes more organized under those conditions, it demands attention. The oscillation also fails to align with simple rotation. If the nucleus were spinning and ejecting material isometrically, the tail's behavior would correlate with spin period. It doesn't. The motion appears decoupled from rotation entirely. Which brings us to momentum. Whenever you see a large-scale feature change direction or oscillate, you have to ask what force is acting on it. Solar wind alone cannot explain controlled lateral motion at that magnitude without producing turbulence. Radiation pressure cannot create rhythmic deviation. Something else must be contributing. This is why Avi Loeb's commentary keeps resurfacing in these discussions. Not because he claims certainty, but because he insists on following the physics to its logical conclusion, even when that conclusion is uncomfortable. A structured oscillation involving a massive trailing feature implies force application. Force application implies control, whether passive or active. And then there's the matter of composition. Spectroscopic data associated with the anti-tail does not resolve cleanly into the expected signatures of a simple comet. That does not mean it's artificial. Interstellar material can be chemically exotic. It can carry compounds rarely seen in our own system. But again, 
Context matters. When unusual chemistry coincides with unusual mechanics, the probability space narrows. Now step back and look at the broader pattern. Over the last several weeks, 3i Atlas has demonstrated repeated brightness irregularities. Not random flaring, not smooth fading. Discrete dimming events that do not correlate cleanly with distance, phase angle, or expected outgassing cycles. During its passage near Mars, the object appeared dimmer than models predicted. Later, as it continued inward, it dimmed again at moments when brightness should have increased. That behavior alone would be puzzling. Combined with tail geometry anomalies, it becomes harder to ignore. Brightness is not an abstract metric. It is the most basic observable property of an astronomical object. It reflects how light interacts with surface and surrounding material. When brightness behaves counterintuitively, it suggests that light is being absorbed, redirected, or blocked in ways we do not fully understand. This is where light curve analysis becomes critical. A light curve is simply brightness plotted over time. For natural bodies, light curves are messy. Rotation introduces periodic variation, but it's noisy. Surface irregularity adds scatter. Outgassing adds spikes and dips. Even highly regular rotating asteroids rarely produce perfectly clean curves. Recent light curve segments attributed to 3i Atlas show extended flat intervals punctuated by sudden drops, then recovery, then repetition. These are not flares. They are absences, dimming events with relatively consistent depth and spacing. A verified the pattern suggests periodic occlusion or absorption rather than emission. Something is intermittently reducing the amount of reflected light reaching observers. What makes this more unsettling is the emerging temporal correlation between these dimming events and the reported oscillation of the anti-tail. Independent data sets, collected by different observers, appear to line up in time. When one phenomenon shifts, the other responds. That raises the possibility that what we are seeing are not separate anomalies, but different projections of a single underlying system. If the anti-tail is coherent and resistant to solar wind dispersion, electromagnetic effects must be considered. Plasma confined by magnetic fields behaves very differently from dust. It can maintain shape. It can transmit force. It can interact dynamically with charged environments. Magnetic containment at that scale would require an energy source, not necessarily an engine in the science fiction sense, but at minimum, an organized system capable of sustaining field structure. This does not automatically imply technology. Nature can produce magnetic structures, but nature rarely produces them in isolation from other expected behaviors. Context, again, matters. Tomorrow's closest approach provides the best possible opportunity to test these interpretations. Geometry improves, phase angle stabilizes, signal to noise increases. If the anomalies are artifacts of perspective or limited data, they should dissolve under better conditions. If they don't, the implications widen. Closest approach is not just about distance, it is about alignment. It is the moment when relative motion slows angularly, when tracking precision peaks, when structures that are otherwise ambiguous become clearer. And there's another layer to this that has received less attention. Astrometric measurements suggest that the anti-tail is not perfectly aligned with the solar wind vector. The deviation is modest in absolute terms, but significant in orbital mechanics. This misalignment implies directionality not dictated by solar forces. When analysts extend the vector defined by this structure outward, it points toward the galactic center, toward Sagittarius A, toward the region from which 3i Atlas originated. That alignment may be coincidental. The galaxy is large, and many vectors point somewhere interesting, but coincidence becomes less and comfortable when combined with coherence, timing, and modulation. Some have suggested that the oscillation itself could function as modulation, not necessarily communication in the narrow sense, but a way of encoding information onto a carrier structure, interacting with the solar environment. That idea remains speculative, but it exists because the data invites it. There is also the matter of reflectivity. Observation suggests that 3i Atlas has an unusually low albedo. It absorbs a large fraction of incident light. Fresh cometary material is typically reflective, especially when actively outgassing. Dark surfaces exist, but combined with dimming behavior, low reflectivity raises questions. Why would an interstellar object become harder to see as it approaches optimal illumination conditions? One possibility is geometry. 
Another is composition. A third is function. Absorbing light is useful if you want to reduce detectability. It is also useful if you want to harvest energy. This brings us back to timing. December 19th is not arbitrary. It represents a moment when Earth, the Sun, and 3i Atlas form a particular alignment. During this window, certain types of interference drop. Certain observational constraints loosen. If something were to be measured, transmitted, or adjusted, this would be an efficient moment to do it. This does not mean that something will happen. It means that if something were designed to happen, this would be when. And now, quietly, in the background, there are reports of timing correlations in observational infrastructure. Nothing officially alarming, nothing dramatic, but subtle clustering of anomalies, slight deviations, irregularities that appear around the same windows across different systems. This is not evidence of intent. It is evidence of activity. Systems that are inactive do not produce synchronized irregularities. Tomorrow, the window closes. The geometry changes. The object recedes. The opportunity passes. If 3i Atlas is natural, tomorrow should clarify that. The tail should behave. The light curve should pick up noise. The anomalies should blur. If it is not, tomorrow will sharpen the contradictions. So here's the position we find ourselves in. Less than 24 hours out, we are watching an object that arrived from outside our solar system that does not behave exactly like the class it was assigned to, that exhibits coherence where dispersion is expected, modulation where randomness should dominate, and timing correlations that cluster around moments of stress and alignment. This does not mean we know what it is. It means we do not yet know what it is not. And that distinction matters. As we move into December 19th, resist the urge to lock in a narrative. Certainty too early is the fastest way to miss what's actually happening. Watch the data. Watch how it evolves under pressure. Watch whether independent signals converge or collapse. Because in the next 24 hours, 3i, Atlas will either resolve into a familiar category or force us to create a new one. Stay with the data and stay alert.